my name is Andreas Kroon. I um, work with a consulting company called Dopter. We are specializing in APIs and open data. And we're one of the co-founders um, of Nordic APIs together with Travis and his company Tubo Technologies. Um, and I want to talk about how APIs disrupt industries, disrupt business models, and what you can do to actually adapt to this. Everybody's standing in the back. There's plenty of seats scattered around if you want to sit down. Um, so let me start with something that might not be the most uplifting ever. Um, technology evolves faster than our ability to adapt um, by Brian Solis. Um, this is true. I can just look at my own family. I have a daughter who used an iPad first time when she was, I don't know, one, one and a half or something. She had used an iPad once, and after that she was annoyed with the TV because you couldn't swipe things. Um, at the same time, older relatives cannot work an iPad. And that's just very, very hands-on practical example of that technology evolves quicker than our ability to adapt. And that's not just us as people, it's also organizations, companies, governments, and so forth. And it's important to keep this in mind because adapting is difficult. But unless you do it, there's, well, there's only one consequence in the long run. So we need to try. And APIs makes this quite possible to be quite adaptable and uh, adapt to new requirements. So with that uh, happy introduction, um, let's talk about some examples of disruption. Um, Reading about disruption, I keep on finding one industry that's claimed to be undisruptable, and that's the hotel industry. Um, but think of Airbnb that lets you rent out your room or your house to people coming to Stockholm or to wherever to stay. Um, that means that the hotel industry is also disruptable. Airbnb might not change the whole industry, but it definitely has an impact. Um, some other good examples um, of uh, old dragons that you thought never could be moved. Uh, Blockbuster. Huge company. 2004, they had 9,000 stores, not in Sweden, but plenty in many other countries. They have 60,000 employees. Uh, VHS, uh, DVDs, I don't know if they started in time to have Betamax as well. They were huge. Um, we had our own uh, chains here in Sweden renting out DVDs and VHS, and there are not many left, and they mostly sell candy today. Um, they were seen as the dominating player. You could never move these guys. However, there are some companies that have done that. Of course, with the help of technological, te technological change, not only by themselves, but compare that to where Netflix is today. I don't know how many people in here use Netflix. I definitely use it way too much every day. Um, in the US, they are responsible for 28% of the tra internet traffic during peak times. 28% one company. That's a lot of bits. That's one company. That's today's equivalent of having 9,000 stores. This is the dominating player. There's other streaming, HBO's trying here in Sweden and in the Nordics. Uh, Amazon has some streaming too, and I think Amazon is responsible for, I think, 1.5% or something like that of the peak traffic. Don't quote me on that number. Um, but this is a huge change. Technology has made this possible. One company is gone, another one is rising to the top. Um, they have an API, Netflix. They handle two billion API requests a day. That is an impressive number. Um, but it's important to think that they don't have a public API, so anybody cannot use this API. This is only for them. So they made their own services, listing movies, streaming movies, uh, listing TV series and so forth available to themselves when they want to build apps on mobiles, on, uh, on Apple TV, on Samsung TV, on Xbox, and so forth. They can quickly make a new app for a new platform, because all they do is the small part that's actually on that device, on that platform. They don't do the whole system. They already packaged their system. They can easily access the data from it using their API. Two billion API requests a day. That is the reason why they can have 28% of the peak internet traffic in the US. Um, and that shows that APIs don't only need to be publicly available to every developer everywhere to be efficient. It can be something that's just internal to one company. And it has a lot of value still. So we're going to talk a lot about APIs today. Most of the examples, I suspect, 
are going to be from public APIs that anybody can use to build an iPhone app or whatever they want. Um, but there's a lot of value of doing an API only internally in a company between departments, uh, for example. Um, talking about just doing things between departments, um, Amazon is the second example. Um, they require all communication between departments to be done via API when it comes to sending data back and forth, which have made them prepare for a world where APIs are required. Um, and you think about the Amazon, well, they sell books. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was in San Francisco on a conference for the first time in about eight years, and I saw a huge difference. Last time I was there, I'm a book nerd, I could go to gigantic mongus bookstores, um, big as blocks, basically. This time, I found one in downtown San Francisco. One small one on a back street, and it was quite dusty inside, so I don't think they had a lot of business. Um, Amazon disrupted that business. But I don't think that's the biggest disruption they are responsible for. It's not just the book industry they destroyed, or disrupted, depending on what, uh, where you, uh, what angle you have on the problem. They also disrupted, say, IBM. And IBM, in this case, they're representing server manufacturers. We have HP, we have Dell, we have many others that actually did hardware servers that you put in a rack and you have a big server room that was way too cold for the pure, poor technicians that had to handle it. Um, that's how I started my career. It was very cold, I can tell you. Um, and Amazon today provides the same services as this hardware did via APIs. If you want a new server today, don't go out and buy one. You can create one very quickly online and run it on Amazon's clouds. Um, and which might be impacted now when NSA is listening to everything, but that's a separate question. They have disrupted the hardware industry. What started as a bookstore disrupted the hardware industries because they took what they built themselves and built a product out of it. They needed to have a website that was up all the time. Uh, people can buy books any time of the day, any time of the night. That's a lot of infrastructure. Okay, we have the infrastructure. Let's sell the infrastructure. So they did that. They actually looked at what's the core of our business. And that's the IT, and we can sell that. One, ana uh, uh, one analyst firm actually estimates the value of Amazon Web Services, as it's called, to $50 billion in 2015. That's a lot of dollars. There's bis the real business to be made here. There's money to be made here. Um, and I can promise you that almost every big website you use during the day, they run on Amazon in one capacity or the other. Um, so we're talking about disruption. Um, Amazon definitely is responsible for some disruption. Netflix as well. Um, Netflix more is towards the TV industry probably than actually towards Blockbuster. Um, but what is disruption? It started as a negative word. It's somebody's disrupting class. It's horrible. Uh, but now it's become something positive, at least in the business world, and at least if you're the one disrupting and not the victim of a disruption. Um, so it's important to be aware that any industry can be disrupted. Your industry, whichever one it is, is either slowly being disrupted right now or it will happen soon. It's just a fact of life. Um, in some cases, it takes decades. Like when the <laughs> telephone came to be, it took decades, because if you have one telephone, it's quite pointless. If everybody in town has it, you want it too. It took a long time to build that network. But it, it didn't take many years for us to switch from cell phones to smartphones. How many in here don't have a smartphone in the pocket right now? Uh, or by the way, if you have it in the pocket, bring it out and tweet about this. Um, but it took about five years from smartphones not existing to everybody having it. Um, my mom now has an iPhone. Sorry, mom, for mentioning you. Um, that is a big step. Um, so disruption is important. It happens quicker and quicker. And it consists of two major parts. It can be a technological advantage of a new player. Oh, we can stream internet, uh, video over the internet, and a lot of people have good internet connection that can actually watch it. Great. Uh, or it can be a business model advantage. We can sell this thing that we just had for ourselves? Okay, great. And uh, we have presentations later today about business models and probably about some technology, technology advantages as well. So we're gonna go through this during the day. 
Um, and if you look at what the big uh, analyst firms say, um, they are really hot on APIs right now. Gartner um, come out every year with the top 10 strategic technical trends, technological trends. And among the top 10 for 2014, five of them require APIs to even function. It's mobile applications, it's cloud technology, and so forth. So without APIs, half of the major technological trends would not be possible. That is quite important. That tells you something, how basic this technology is. It's kind of an infrastructure. Um, so let's talk a bit about those related technologies. This is not exactly the list that Gartner had, but these are the ones that I think are uh, important in this context to think as related to the API trend. So even if we're talking about APIs, I'm going to mention that abbreviation way too many times today, we're talking about so much more. We're talking about cloud, for example. Amazon, um, if you use Gmail, you have your mail in the cloud. Maybe you have some security backups in the cloud. You have your photos on Flickr. Um, if you have a business, maybe they run on Salesforce, um, and so forth and so forth. There's a lot happening in the cloud because you don't want to have everything in-house anymore. Um, Amazon is a perfect example of a major cloud player. And that's a strong trend in its own. But to reach all that information that you have in the cloud and to upload new information to it, you need to have APIs. The next one is mobile. Again, smartphones. Everybody has it. If you planned your trip here today with an app checking when the subway uh, was going, that app is using API to talk to SL's servers. If you check the weather, that weather app is using API to connect the server somewhere with this information. If your company has an iPhone app, I guarantee there's an API. So you probably already have an API. Uh, and if you do, you should be aware of that. It's very, very easy to see how that API works and for somebody to use it, even if they're not inside your company. There's APIs everywhere. It's just expected. Um, Apple is a major player in the space with the iPhone and the half, half a billion apps or whatever there is on the App Store right now. Most of those use APIs. Um, another strong trend is the Internet of Things that I just learned is supposed to be called the Internet of Everything now. Um, you have Internet-enabled devices everywhere. Maybe you have, I have a counter here with that counts my steps and makes me feel bad every night when I check how long I haven't walked. Um, you will have an internet-enabled car soon if you don't have it already. Um, everything will be internet-enabled somehow. And a great example is Philips. They have internet-enabled light bulbs. Uh, we can, over the internet, you're maybe an iPhone app, or you can write some own uh, program that does this, can change color, switch on and off, and so forth. Maybe you want to time it in, so when you watch the big blue on the big screen, everything turns blue. And if you see some horror movie, everything turns red. I don't know what your, your particular taste is. But the important thing is that you have light bulbs that are internet enabled. Those are accept, uh, accessible again via APIs. Um, social media. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and so forth. Those all have APIs. And a major example is Facebook. They, would not have been, they wouldn't be where they are today without an API. Every time, time you see a login with your Facebook uh, ID on a website, they're using an API. Um, every time you, there's a share this with uh, button, you can claim there's an API. Every time you use an application that somehow imports your friends from Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever it is to, to find connections, they're using APIs. They're, using a lot of people to build apps and market their content and their presence. Because Facebook and everybody else, they want to own your identity online. And key of owning your identity is to be everywhere. Quantified self. As I mentioned, I have a Fitbit in my pocket me uh, measuring number of steps. You can have bracelets measuring how many calories you burn and how far you, um, you ride your bike. And you can have apps measuring how well you sleep, so forth, so forth. There's a lot of talk about quantified self, lots of statistic data about yourself. Um, again, needs to have APIs, and Fitbit is a great example of that. And lastly, open data. There was a whole day about it yesterday. Uh, open data um, kind of means 
open government data, even if that's not the exact uh, definition. So free accessibility to government data. We paid it as taxpayers already. We want to use it. Great example is what uh, the Swedish Parliament is doing. Uh, you can get a lot of information about Swedish Parliament via an API. Uh, so if you want to do an analysis of who voted on what, there's data available. Um, and this is great. This is fantastic. This is the future. So you see, APIs are everywhere. Um, <coughs> and to quote another uh, analyst firm, in this case Forrester, APIs become digital glue. Um, they have also top 10 tech trends every year, and this is trend number three. APIs become digital glue. They keep everything together. Um, they're what enables a lot of related technologies um, that kind of keeps the new world together. That's why we're here today. How do we use this glue to actually benefit us in our business? So how does APIs disrupt? Um, that's kind of the key question, because now I mention APIs and a lot of cool hyped keywords and buzzwords. There's cloud and there's mobile and, and social media and so forth. But how do APIs as a technology disrupt? Um, part of it is, of course, to disrupt as, um, as uh, coming along with the trends of cloud and mobile and so forth. But more important than that, all those trends and APIs separately, they do something to us and to businesses. This is the most important thing. They change expectations. Um, just think about these questions. There should be an app for that. Why isn't there an app for that? I want to do this. Why isn't there an app for that? Why can't I do this on my phone? Um, if you're not asking that question, trust me, your kids uh, or, uh, or, or teenagers around you, they ask this question. They assume you can do things on your phone. And that assumption in turn means they assume there's an API, even if they don't know the word. Um, why can I not log in with Facebook on this site or this service? Again, they're assuming there is an API and that somebody's using it, they don't know the term. Um, why can't I share my Instagram photos easily on Twitter? That is a real live example. Instagram photo sharing service was bought by Facebook. Twitter don't like Facebook, so they shut off Instagram's access to Twitter's APIs. Before you could automatically spread your Instagram photos on Twitter, uh, and that was killed overnight. People got very upset. Of course, we want to do this. They got upset about their API not being accessible without knowing that there's an API needed. So it's changing expectations. You expect this to just work. And for businesses, the question is more, why can't we just integrate with your system? Why do we have to meet around a, a conference table with bad coffee and <laughs> no oxygen for three days to discuss what file format to send back and forth? Why can't I just, on your web page, read your API documentation, test it out quickly, get my, one of my developers to test it out? If I like it, I'll pay you for it. And if you don't have that uh, ability to partner with other companies, your competition does. And then they turn to the competition instead of you. So this is the one biggest uh, disruptive influence that APIs have. It changes expectations. And you need to live up to expectations or somebody else will. Um, some minor trends, um, and this is more maybe an advantage of having an API, is speed to market. Netflix does it, they can quickly uh, spin up a new app on some new uh, mobile OS that comes out tomorrow. Um, you can quickly answer, uh, come, what do you call it? Come with an answer to new viral trends. Suddenly it's very cool with, I don't know, soap or something, because some celebrity did something stupid with soap. You want to pull up an app that spins on this, um, this trend and you want to do it now? Speed to market. Um, during the Olympics, uh, Coca-Cola bought the rights to be the official uh, drink company of the Olympics in London. They didn't want Pepsi anywhere. Um, so they used an API, several APIs actually, to build iPhone apps for their employees to take photo of any Pepsi deliveries they saw. 
uh, was uploaded to a server tagged with time, geographic location, blah, 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 blah. And that way they could uh, hunt down those horrible offenders that provide Pepsi drinks. Um, this is speed to market. This is not something that you want to spend years doing. You want to do it now. Um, Absolute does this with uh, different drinks, for example, vodka-based drinks. They want to be able to do something now. So they already built the infrastructure that enables this. Um, leverage. Nothing is too big to fail or too small to succeed. That's again another Brian Solis quote, the same guy as I quoted, first slide. Um, a small guy can, with APIs, do as much as a big company today. You can buy server capacity on Amazon, you can use lots of other, maybe Facebook's API to get some, some social aspect into your app and so forth. There's APIs for everything. A small guy can do as much, and sometimes even more, because they're more agile and quicker than a big company. It's killing silos. Data no longer lives in a protected little silo where you can buy paper copies from, of this data. Um, data is mixed, remixed, analyzed, combined, everywhere. Um, and it's harder and harder to keep this data siloed. So if you're today making a living of selling siloed data that nobody else has access to, you knew, probably need to start rethinking that because people will have access to this data even if you don't want to, somehow, from some other, some other source. Or maybe several other sources that they can combine themselves. Um, productize the core, just as Amazon did. What was the core of a business? It's not really selling a book. It's being a platform for e-commerce and having that platform, we need IT and why don't we sell IT? So it's both productize the core and kind of sell your side product. So think about what you're doing that you could probably charge for if you pack in it a bit differently. Um, maybe instead of you delivering a portal where people come and do services, you rethink and say that we don't actually deliver, we deliver the portal, but that's not the core of our business. The core of our business is delivering the data in that portal. And if somebody else wants to build another website or um, iPhone app or whatever on our data, so people don't come to our portal, but they use our data, we can still charge for it, we can still make money, why not? Um, so productize the core of your business. Um, so how do you adapt? How do you survive this? Um, there are several steps. The most important one is educate. Educate, educate, educate. I'm so glad to see so many people here today because um, it's important that this is not an IT issue. Marketing needs to know about this. Uh, CEOs needs to know about this. Um, sales needs to know about this. What is an API and how can it impact us? And why is it not the most horrible thing ever? Which is the natural reaction if you hear some new technical trend that, no, we don't want that. It's, it's not what we did yesterday. So educate, talk, talk to people about this. It cannot be IT only. If, a, if an API project is IT only, it's bound to fail. It needs to have um, connections to bigger part of the organization. Otherwise, there will be no budget, and people will fight the project, and you will not succeed. Start. Publish something. It might not be technically perfect. Uh, it might not be um, what you actually aim to do in the long run, but start publishing to learn the process of what's actually involved in doing this. It might be internal. It might just be for yourself, for your iPhone app or whatever it is. It might be just for a few partners, or it might be for everyone. But start. Start to learn what's required. Start to learn to, and as a part of educating your organization about this, you need to get started. Um, and always, when you do this, design it based on external requirements. So even if you do it just internal, think about what would somebody that used this from outside the organization actually need? Because um, then, if you want to publish it later to partners or publicly, you're prepared. Discuss, talk about it, of course, among yourselves, but to the people using the data, most importantly. You don't know what they want until they tell you. They won't tell you until you have something to show them, and they will say, oh, not that. Talk to them. Improve. Be agile. It's not publish and we're done. It's a continuous project. Use. 
Use APIs yourself. There's plenty of APIs out there that I'm sure can bring business value to your organization today. It's not just about publishing, it's about using. And by using, you're also getting used to the idea of what's, what's needed to be part of this ecosystem. So this is absolutely critical, that you're aware of what's out there. If nothing else, be aware of what your competition is doing. Play with their APIs. See what they're doing in wrong, and you can do it better. Experiment. Maybe you get all your developers and business people together one Friday, and you just make some product that's not really viable in business, but you're playing around experimenting. What can we do with our data? Can we combine it with this other data source that's public over here with uh, some uh, open data from some uh, government agency from Naturvårdsverket or something? Or can we take data from Facebook and combine it with what we have? What can we do? Experiment and play with it. Um, it's, it's very useful and it's quite fun too. And it's a good way to get different parts of the organization to talk to each other. So, APIs become digital glue. It's what keeps so many things together. It's what enables so many technologies, many of which I'm sure you're already using. Um, and it's also what's becoming a glue in a lot of businesses. Partnerships done via APIs, for example. New business opportunities. Leaner organizations that can act quicker to new trends. Um, it really becomes the digital glue. So. The key question is, do you have the glue you need to build your future? And I hope that we can provide enough information today to give you this, um, this glue so you can go out and paste things together yourself and actually disrupt instead of being disrupted. I think I actually have a few minutes for, for questions, if anybody have that. Otherwise, grab me in the break and I'm happy to talk to you. Okay, thank you very much.